Who is this man we call Eric Clapton? I don't know. Um, he's one of these unknown guitar players that everyone seems to really enjoy listening to. Um, so Clapton, I mean, what more could you say about the man? He's he's influenced millions of guitar players more than likely. Um, and these licks which he plays have all got the same sort of kind of essence to them. And I think with these licks uh, you're going to learn today, all five, da -da, um, you will find that you'll try and piece them into your own playing, which is kind of like the idea of doing these. Um, so it's not essentially to learn an Eric Clapton lick, it's more to learn the technique involved um, so that you can put these into your own playing, so, and then thus making them your licks with an Eric Clapton edge, which is will be rather nice. There's five licks, and they're all based around the uh, B minor pentatonic, which is, and blue scale, which is this. Okay, so um, I'll just break that down if you don't know it already, and it goes 7 on the thick string, 10, and then the A string is 7, 9, D string 7, 9, G is 7, 9, B is 7, 10, and then the thin string is 7, 10 again. Now if you're unsure of that scale, or it's one of the first times that you've come across it, then make sure you just play it up and down as smoothly and as clean as you can um, and try and alternate pick your way through it as well. So another thing to try and practice is the blues scale which basically comes in in a similar sort of way so 7, 10, 7, this time 8, 9 then you've got 7, 9, 7, 9, 10 and then 7, 10, 7, 10 so you've got two strings where there's three notes on those strings um, which is basically the blues note. Now if you've never played the blues scale before one word of warning dun, 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 is don't hang on that blues note it's going to sound flipping awful if you do but as a passing note it works wonderfully well um, so you know with that said use it wisely use it sparingly but use it because it will flavor up your playing no end and it's such a nice scale um, to use and put into your arsenal of licks and scales and all that sort of stuff your lick bag your arsenal bag your thing Bag, bag. Anyway, lick number one sounds like this. Okay, so that's lick number one. Now, first thing that I want to point out is the attack on the strings. Um, it's quite a heavy attack to get these licks to pop, and it's usually that first note pops out quite heavily. Um, and yet your hammer-ons and pull-offs you're going to need to learn within these as well. So you're going to need to focus on some techniques within the licks. To make them sound good but the lick broken down goes like this you've got 14 hammer on to 17 and then back off to 14 on that first string um, then it's 17 on the second string now i would use the second finger so finger one three and then back to one and then the second finger so back to the 14 on that first string and then onto the second string again 17 15 pull off to the 16 with a second finger on the third string um, back to the 15 hammer on to 17 on the second string and then you're going to pick that 15th fret with, and then end it with vibrato basically so you get pick number two is more of a, a B major type scenario um, and it'll be, it's more of a mixolydian sound. I've got a lot of buzz going on, haven't I? But it is a strat. So this one sounds like this. Now you'll notice with a lot of the Clapton style stuff, um, staccato notes, which is where you're sort of cutting the notes short so you're picking it and then stopping it ringing you're not letting any of those notes ring so this one especially it's got that, that two staccato notes and you have to kind of dig into those to make them pop and that's kind of one of the the clues to that Clapton sound getting that it really does make a difference so practice that side of things as well. Um, so breaking this lick down, you've got the bend, pre-bend on the 14th fret 2nd string. 
adding in that vibrato on the 12 and with uh, Clapton sort of vibrato you, you have to make it sort of fairly quick but solid really solid and he would use it I can't do it the same way as him but it's kind of using your forearm like that um, whereas I'm more in the BB King approach anyway so pre-bend full tone then you've got the uh, 14th fret bend again and then as soon instead of going up to what would be a tone you're kind of taking it a semitone and before it just reaches that semitone sound you're going to the 12th fret on that first string um, and then it's that's a staccato note by the way so and then 14th fret staccato note another pre-bend and then you're coming back down to what would be the 12 a 14 pull off to the 12 like that to the 13 on the third string and then two this is another signature thing from Eric Clapton 13 on that and then two strikes of the 12th fret so like that so down up or an up down whichever way you want to do it so and that's a, a typical Clapton thing where you've, you're sort of ending a lick with a double pop. Try it in your normal lick. So, for instance, if you were to gonna, if you were going to go, just adding that ba down at the end really does make that Clapton sort of sound. Lick number three. Here we go. So this one's a nice one. I really like this. So it brings in more of the standard pentatonics or rock and roll element where you've got the um, uh, ninth fret, sorry, not ninth fret on that third string. Seven, seven, back to the seven. So, and then this time you're actually sliding from the tenth fret immediately into the twelfth fret. So, with vibrato at the end and that gives it its kind of intensity so then you're coming down to this little section which is seven on the first string ten pull off to seven on the second string to the nine on the third string and then the typical Clapton cliche on the uh, seventh fret of the second string to finish that lick off with so Lick number four, this one's slightly different, um, well, it's still Clapton, but we're, we've got a slow release of a pre-bend, um, and this is, again, one of those things which Clapton does all the time. Um, so, so that's the lick itself. But what you're doing with that is you've got the tenth fret on the second string first, pre-bending the third string on the ninth fret just a semitone so you're actually bending into the blue scale and then bringing that down so it's kind of like a flinch you'll get used to it but it takes a little bit of time to do um, it's just that little technique which you'll have to learn so straight onto the um, seventh fret with vibrato um, on that third string and then you've got two staccato notes like that so so it's the nine on the third string staccato seven with vibrato again then you've got nine seven and the seven so nine seven same string pull off the ninth fret on the fourth string staccato and then back to the uh, ninth fret and then slide it out so so the last one lick five this one um, is a little bit more in depth and a little bit more sort of technique orientated but we've got a slide immediately actually first off let me play it for you it goes like this there you go um, so that one basically is sliding into the 11th fret on the third string to the tenth fret on the second string striking that twice but the second time adding in the vibrato so you've got the staccato tenth fret first time with the vibrato very quick and fluid like that then you've got a tone and a half bend and when 
you come back down, you'll strike in, so you strike the bend, let it down, and then strike that bend, uh, strike the 12th fret straight away as you come out of that bend. And that's going to be a staccato note on that 12th fret as well. So, And then you've got the 10th fret, it's another staccato note, so it's like... And then you go to the third string on the ninth fret. So this one again, you're going up to the blue scale for the bend, and letting it down. So it's a bend up, let down, a very quick bend up, and a very slow let down. So, and you're pulling off from the nine to the seven after that bend and let down. And then you've got the ninth fret on the uh, fourth string, like that. And then you've got staccato seventh fret on the third string. And then seventh fret again, third string, this time with vibrato, without that at the end. Um, okay, so those were the five licks in that Clapton style. The key to making these work is to try and think about the way in which he plays. So using those staccato notes, bringing in that double strike at the end of a lick, because you can do this to any of your licks as well. So a standard lick that you would play, think about adding in a double note at the end of the lick, and then that will instantly make it sound more Clapton-like. Um, and then the same thing with the staccato notes. Instead of just doing a standard sort of like... You might want to go something like that and then that will again instantly bring in that kind of Clapton sound. Um, all of these little points, hammer-ons and pull-offs, very quick hammer-on pull-off is again another Clapton lick, just something as simple as like that and if you were to go that would be a Clapton style lick um, and these these are things that you can add into your own playing that is the end of the lesson and if you liked it please like share subscribe hit the bell button and then you will receive all notifications of when my videos become live if you want the tab for this it's on my website which is up there dansguitar.com if you would like to learn more with me visit my patreon page which is patreon.com forward slash dance page um, and that's it, that's all I need to say really. Check out these videos that pop up somewhere around me. Um, and just uh, come along, say hi, and uh, see me on the social media. So I shall bid you all farewell, and um, I uh, look forward to seeing you all soon.